Okay, welcome to Accelerated Math, solve a one variable absolute value equation. And I want to start with something really simple. You guys know that absolute value is the distance from zero. So if I said the absolute value of x was 10, most of you would know that if that's true, um, that this x value has to either be 10 um, or negative 10. And that would mean that if you're at zero here, that this would be true for 10 because it's you know, 10 units away from 0 and negative 10 because it's also 10 units away from 0. It doesn't care about the, the negative aspect of it. So we're going to use that same logic with this one and we're going to say, hey, you know what? Okay, now this is a little more complicated in here, but it's still the same concept. It's saying the absolute value of something is equal to 10. This one's saying 17. So I'm going to say, you know what? Either 6x minus 11 is equal to 17 or 6x minus 11 is equal to negative 17. It's the same exact concept. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to solve each equation. And they're usually uh, relatively simple equations at this point. Solve them separately. So I got 6x is equal to 28. Yep. And then divide by 6. And you know that's probably as complicated as it gets. Is um, Well, actually on accelerated math on this problem, I didn't include the multiple choice answers on this one. but the uh, accelerated math generally is in this kind of a form, uh, but if you need to reduce it or can reduce it, like this one, uh, well, nothing, uh, two, two goes into both of those, so it's the same as 14 over 3, so that's the answer I'm probably going to find on accelerated math. And then this next one, I'm still doing plus 11, but this time it was equal to negative 17, so I get 6x equals negative 6. I divide both sides by 6 and I get x equals negative 1 because a negative divided by a positive is a negative. All right, And these are the two answers that you should find on the multiple choice. All right, And then going to the next one. All right, This one looks a little more complicated because I have some stuff on the outside of this absolute value and the first step, and I didn't mention this in the last one because I didn't want to talk about I want to show you a simple example but here are the steps we're going to go through is I call it isolate and what we're going to do is fancy term for get everything off of there we're going to isolate everything except the absolute value portion and I'll show you what that means looks like in a minute absolute value portion so we're going to isolate everything except for the absolute value then we're going to validate Nice little rhyming terms there. We're going to validate and see if it really could be a true uh, problem. And I'll show you what that means. We're going to check to see if it's positive, if positive. And then finally, we're going to separate. Separate. And what I mean by that is we're going to split this into two problems. So split into two two problems, just like we did in that last one where we had it equal to the positive and the negative. Um, so those are the steps we're going to do. All right, so take a look at this. We're going to isolate this, and what I mean by that is we're going to get this 14 off of here. It was plus 14, so we're minusing 14 to both sides, and we're left with the absolute value portion only, and it's equal to negative 1. Then I'm going to go to, so I did step 1, and now I'm going to look at step 2, and this one is often overlooked, but if you look at this, this is not a valid problem because the absolute value of something can only come out to a positive. And so um, what's inside might be negative, but if you take the absolute value of it, it's got to be positive. So this one is not a valid problem. So you can stop and you can choose no solution. Uh, they may have it listed this way as no solution, or they might write no solution. So those are three ways I can think of that you can say no solution. All right. And you might be saying, well, what do you mean no solution? Well, there's absolutely no number that you can put in for x here and make this statement true. You can try it, try it with some big numbers, some small numbers, but it's not valid. So we're going to use the same steps to um, go into this next one. So we're going to isolate, validate, and separate. All right. And this one, I put this one in here just because it has equal to, it's on the other side of this, but it's the same concept. This one is already isolated. So we're going to go on to validate. Is it a positive number over here? Yes. So now we're going to go into separate, and we're going to separate it into two problems. Negative 4x plus 1 is either equal to 3, or negative 4x plus 1 is equal to negative 3, and then we're just going to solve these. Minus 1 from both sides. Negative 4x is equal to 2. Divide by negative 4, 
and I get x equals See that negative? That just means that whole fraction is negative, and I'm going to reduce it, negative 1 half. So that's one of the answers. Minus 1 to both sides, I get negative 4x equals oh, uh, negative 4, and I'm dividing by negative 4. Here I've got two negatives in division. That comes out to a positive, so it's positive 1. So those are my two answers. All right, relatively simple. Just remember to validate. All right, and here's another one. I want to do one more that had uh, kind of two steps to it. I still need to uh, isolate. And you notice this. A lot of students are going to look at this negative 9 up front, and they're going to go, okay, I undo that, do plus 9. But it's not 9 minus or, or that absolute value portion minus 9. It's negative 9 times this stuff. Okay, so to undo it, we need to do the opposite of multiplication, which is division. So we're going to divide by negative 9, and divide by negative 9, we're down to the absolute value of negative x. Negative 9x plus 7 is equal to negative 7 ninths. Now I want to validate it. Um, is it valid? No. And the reason is, is because of the negative. All right. Now I'm going to change this problem just because I wanted one that you finished out that came to uh, decimal answers. Let's assume that this one is a positive for a second. I'm changing the changing the problem. Let's make it uh, that. And uh, so we're still so we're going to have to separate it. Um, oops. All right. And uh, so negative nine x plus seven is equal to seven ninths, or and this is under the changed problem. Negative nine x plus seven is equal to negative seven ninths. And then I'm going to um, solve each one separately. All right. Now here's where a lot of you are going to go. Ah, you know, I don't want to do that. Um, you know, you can change seven into equivalent ninths, and that's negative 63 ninths. Or, you know, if you've got that fancy calculator, then you can do uh, seven ninths minus seven. So I'm just going over here to my calculator. Let me drag it into my window here. I got, um, well, got to be able to see it. 7 ninths, so fraction, 7 ninths, and then get out of that fraction, and then minus, what was it, 7? All right, negative 56 ninths. So I just want to show you, you can do that with a calculator, negative 56 ninths, um, or I could have done it this way. I was still gotten negative 56 ninths. And uh, now I'm going to divide by negative 9. Again, you can grab your calculator, or you can go back to that good old fifth grade math that said dividing by a fraction, this is a fraction, I'm putting a 1 under it, is the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal. All right? And then I just multiply across. So this one comes out to, I know it's kind of ugly, but 56 over 81, that's actually the answer if you know this was on, uh, on the multiple choice on accelerated math. And I go through the same thing over here, minus 7, minus 7 negative 9x equals, and you know, come up with whatever that is. And in this case, I think it would be uh, negative 70 ninths. I'm going to divide by negative 9. We just learned that dividing by negative 9 is the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal. So I'm multiplying by that. So this one's going to come out to 70 over 81. Looks horrible, um, but those are the answers. And it's not too bad if you can remember that little keep change flip thing that you learned back in fifth grade. All right, that's it. Have fun with it.